What's up, everybody? I guess Jump Love gave you all hay fever because we've got another grass type coming your way this week. Today, we've got the human embodiment when I need to decide what sort of restaurant to go to. That's right, it's the Pokemon whose mind is always split three ways. Exeggutor. Our lovable dope of a coconut tree is one of the original multiple head Pokemon. According to his Pokedex entries, they all get along well together. It's like inside out, but mostly good feeling. Although I do wonder what happened to the other heads as an execute. Like, weren't there six of them? And now there's less? As for its battling, Exeggutor's biggest appearance had it losing to a Krabby. Well, let's hope that's not indicative of its competitor track record. Let's find out how good was Exeggutor actually. And in this video, we'll be covering these competitive formats. Despite the absolute horror of Exeggutor's red version sprite, it's got everything it needs to succeed in Gen 1. Psychic typing? Check. Big special stat? Check. Paralysis? Check. But Exeggutor's path to success actually came from another status entirely. Sleep. If you wanted to run sleep on your red, blue, and yellow team, you had three real viable options. Gengar, Jinx, and Exeggutor. While you might think that the higher speed of Gengar and Jinx would make them the preferred choice, Exeggutor's access to the higher accuracy sleep powder actually made it a more reliable sleeper. But even past that, it was the fact that Exeggutor was able to function as a useful Pokemon outside of spreading status that made it easily the best sleeper in the game. Its typing gave it resistance to two of the strongest attacking types in the meta, Psychic and Ground, making it an effective check to the Rock and Ground types that were commonly seen, as well as opposing Psychic types like Alakazam. That typing was backed up by a respectable bulk that let it switch in often to threaten sleep. These eggs ain't gonna crack easily. What's more, Exeggutor's frightening special stat meant that his own offensive presence was nothing to scoff at. Psychic and Mega Drain were both threatening options, though running both frequently meant giving up Stun Spore. This is because, alongside Sleep Powder, Exeggutor had one other mandatory move, Explosion. With a combination of Sleep Powder and Explosion, Exeggutor was constantly threatening either status or the potential removal of one of your Pokemon. This was usually more than enough for it to win the battle against opposing Psychic types with high special stats, although it did have the option of running Double Edge or Hyper Beam if it wanted to shoot for a KO on Alakazam or Chansey without cracking its head open. In fact, Exeggutor's move pool was actually quite vast, especially for Gen 1. You had your choice of Reflect, Leech Seed, Rest, or even Egg Bomb, although none were recommended over any of the standard sets. Exeggutor had enough versatility for each of its three heads, but that didn't mean it was uncounterable. Its biggest weakness was its lack of reliable recovery. Pokemon that resisted its psychic or took negligible damage could usually recover their health and win the stall war. This meant Pokemon like Alakazam, Chansey, and Starmie, while Pokemon that hit Exeggutor super effectively like Jinx, Lapras, and Zapdos similarly powered through. But straight up countering Exeggutor was hard. It was tanky enough that nothing was going to be killing it outright, meaning it always had a chance to put potentially get a sleep powder off, and then blow up on your next counter. Thus, countering Exeggutor frequently meant absorbing sleep, which is something many psychic types did well, and then threatening it outright. The single best counter to Exeggutor was Jinx, who was able to resist psychic, freeze its coconuts off, and potentially get a sleep off beforehand. Jinx's relative lack of use outside of that role was actually a boon, since it meant getting blown up wasn't a big deal. Similarly, other strong Blizzard users like Lapras and Articuno could try to put the ice on Exeggutor. But Exeggutor's ability to effectively remove an opposing Pokemon in not one but two ways meant it was one of the hardest Pokemon to stop in the game. It wouldn't be pulling off sweeps, but that constant versatile threat put the burden on the opponent to stop it. It means Exeggutor is one of the best Pokemon in the entire metagame, right up there with Chansey, Snorlax, and Tauros as one of the big four of Gen 1. So going into Gen 2, Exeggutor certainly had high expectations to live up to, but with slightly diminished tools, Exeggutor lost a whopping 60 points of special defense, severely diminishing its ability to tank special hits. It also had to contend with all the Pokemon is specially designed to take out psychic types, including Tyranitar, Skarmory, and Fortress. And although it still had important resistances to ground, electric, and water types, the popularity of Pursuit, Ice Beam, Fire Blast, or even a surprise hidden power bug could ruin its day because of its newly lowered stats. But despite all that, Exeggutor's specially seasoned exploding eggs were still a compelling enough reason to use it. Its primary sets stayed mostly the same. Sleep Powder and Explosion to maintain offensive presence, and Psychic to deal with people over predicting. The biggest change was that while using a second second attacking move had been somewhat optional due to the strength of paralysis in Gen 1, here it was mandatory. You really needed Giga Drain or Hidden Power Fire, as now there were Pokemon that resisted both Explosion and Psychic, a feat that had never been possible before. Just like last gen, Exeggutor had enough moves to stuff an omelet with. You could always go Stun Spore to get around Sleep Claws if you really wanted to, or Leech Seed to force the opponent to switch even more. Toss those two moves together with Substitute, and if you had Spikes up, your opponent was forced to constantly switch, all while staring into Exeggutor 
Xenomorph's three grinning faces. Hidden Power Fire meant that Exeggutor had enough straight attacking moves to potentially go completely down that avenue. After all, it has 125 special attack. But with no status, you likely weren't forcing the switches that made Exeggutor so effective. Finally, Exeggutor had access to the recovery it had sorely missed in the last generation in the form of Moonlight and Synthesis. But Exeggutor's lacking special defense meant that attempting to be a tank was somewhat out of its repertoire now. As for counters, the first strongest counters were those who didn't care about Exeggutor's big threat sleep. The prevalence of sleep talk meant that this list was fairly long, but the strongest candidates were absolutely the legendary electric types, Zapdos and Raikou, whose hidden power ice provided an immediate threat. Suicune, Vaporeon, and Snorlax were also prominent somnambulants, but had problems of their own. The water types feared a potential Giga Drain, while the threat of losing your Snorlax via explosion could potentially be a game-ending move. Of course, that was a problem with countering Exeggutor this way in general. It was more than happy to remove a prominent threat by blowing it up if it could. Sometimes you gotta break a few eggs to make an omelet. So on the other end of counters were, of course, the Pokemon that didn't care about explosion. Skarmory, Fortress, and Tyranitar, who all had the added benefit of resistance or immunity to Psychic. Of course, all of these Pokemon had to contend with the potential super effective Giga Drain or Hidden Power Fire. In fact, some of the best Pokemon were those who simply dealt with explosion by other means, like Houndoom and Umbreon. Umbreon's charm made explosion fizzle, and then Toxic and Pursuit were two of the best moves against Exeggutor in general. It also hated getting status. Houndoom, on the other hand, just use speed and power to potentially KO with Fire Blast, and those low defenses didn't matter considering it was immune to Psychic because of its dark typing. Both of these Pokemon were totally screwed if the Exeggutor predicted right though, which was really the story of Exeggutor in general. There's no single Pokemon who can deal with Explosion and Sleep Powder simultaneously, and while quite a few Pokemon can come in and threaten it, weaving through the wall of Explosion, Psychic, and Special Sleepy Time Powder meant that Exeggutor was a dominant offensive force all on its own. For the second generation running, Exeggutor was one of the best Pokemon in in the game, even with all the nerfs to its type, game plan, and stats. The meta was not kind to Exeggutor in Gen 3. Gengar and Tyranitar were arguably the two best Pokemon in the game, and those two Pokemon had great matchups against Exeggutor anyways, because they dealt with explosions so well. In addition, the prevalence of Skarm Bliss posed big problems for Exeggutor. While before you would just want to explode on Blissey, you can't quite do that anymore when it has so many pivots to wall the explosion and Psychic Whip. If Tyranitar or Skarmory doesn't work, how about Metagross? Exeggutor was still able to pull off its patented sleep powder and explosion combo, but these days it was more stall oriented. Use either Leech Seed or Giga Drain for sustain and try to annoy dark types as much as possible. If stall wasn't quite your speed, Exeggutor could just let it all out with Solar Beam. Sunny Day required more setup, but the trade off was having a move almost as strong as explosion without the potential of killing yourself. So Sleep Powder, Solar Beam, and your choice of hidden power almost made Exeggutor as strong as its old explosion set, although it lost straight up to special walls. The issue here was that Tyranitar was everywhere and loved coming in on it, making this set even less reliable. Speaking of special walls, those absolutely were its biggest problems. We said early that Explosion was less threatening, but there's actually a more subtle reason why that's true. EVs and IVs. What this means is that Exeggutor's attack was significantly lower, because you can no longer max out all stats. Exeggutor would still usually nab a KO on Blissey with Explosion, but the destructive power of that move was diminished overall. So with all that said, special tanks like Blissey and Celebi did well against Exeggutor not only because Explosion was less threatening to them, but because it was less threatening in general. Other counters included Pursuit users like Houndoom, Titar, and Metagross, and status still ruined it, as did the other resident trapper Dugtrio, whose hidden power bug would cut down Exeggutor easily. Although Exeggutor was in borderline, it was dangerously close to tipping into underuse as one of the least used and overused. A far cry from the fun it had before. It does have to be said, however, that with its brand new chlorophyll, Exeggutor could potentially function in Ubers alongside Groudon, like a certain other Pokemon we covered last week, as one of the fastest sleepers in the game with a destructive solar beam to boot, or even subseed. As time went on, Exeggutor's low speed and special defense made it more and more vulnerable. Gen 4 gave it some nice new attacking moves in Leaf Storm and Low Kick, but it wasn't quite able able to muster the power necessary for overuse. Just look at the most defining Pokemon in the meta, Scizor and Heatran, and it should be clear that there wasn't really any place for Exeggutor to do his thing. It wasn't all bad though, because this is one of those cases where dropping to a lower tier increased its prominence. Gen 3 had Exeggutor in the worst of both worlds, underwhelming in overuse and exiled from underuse. Able to run in underuse, Exeggutor wreaked the sort of havoc it had been capable of in Gen 2. That incredible special attack let it punch holes in anything it wanted to with Leaf Storm and Psychic, all while keeping itself topped off 
off with synthesis, more threatening in the relatively weaker attacking environment of underuse. Once you couldn't punch holes anymore, what else but sleep powder? Well, that said, focus on sticking around and dealing consistent damage. Executor could also go full attack by simply switching from lefties to life orb, throwing in a low kick or explosion, and tossing on attack EVs. And that support move pull made Executor as unpredictable as its three heads, as it could run sunny day, dual screens, or even trick room. Executor was great in underuse, but it was still underused. And while Executor continued to be outmatched by other Pokemon, it did enjoy a brief moment in the sun in Gen 5. Like literally, this thing has two sun abilities. While Harvest wasn't even seen too much in overuse, Chlorophyll boosted Executor's lackluster speed to, well honestly, not even that high. Its base 95 attack actually isn't that bad, and Explosion was gutted this generation. Thus, Executor was perfectly capable of running a mixed set, which had the unique benefit of being able to lure sun team counters like Heatran or Tyranitar and then KO them. Woodhammer and Nature Power made for strong counters to Heatran and Tyranitar, while Leaf Storm or Psychic hit from the stronger special attack that threatened most other Pokemon. In its final slot, Hidden Power Fire was obviously strong on any Sun team. Of course, Exeggutor was completely able to go full special attack if it wanted to. Exeggutor could even attempt to spec into its physical side due to its access to Swords Dance and good physical move pull as well. Exeggutor could potentially also run Harvest Citrus Berry. This let Exeggutor fully replenish its HP from the loss associated with Substitute. Of course, that meant you lost the Chlorophyll boost. That lack of speed was Exeggutor's biggest downfall. Even in the Sun, most Choice Scarf Pokemon outsped him because of his low speed. Choice Tyranitar, Choice Terrakion, they all invalidated the only reason Exeggutor was usable in the first place, and turned him back into the never used Pokemon he pretty much was. Not to mention any other weather would do the same. What's more, Pokemon who targeted his other horrible stat, Special Defense, destroyed Exeggutor. The laddies walled him completely and eviscerated him, while Volcarona thrived in the sun as well and could set up Quiver Dance. While Exeggutor was seen in overuse occasionally because of the sun, this is one more Pokemon who was seen in many incarnations mostly because of its ability to abuse weather. In terms of usage, Exeggutor was still solidly a never used Pokemon. At least down there, it was fully capable of using both its abilities to the fullest. Harvest may have been a niche strategy in singles, but in doubles, well, it was still a niche. But when you're Wolf Glick, that doesn't matter. If you don't know about Wolf and his Exeggutor, it's a torrid love story with the best of them. His old blog was even called Eggy Emporium. Wolf took an incredible Harvest Exeggutor all the way to second place at his first ever Worlds in 2012, before eventually being stopped by the future champ, Ray Rizzle. This team is honestly one of the coolest Worlds teams ever, and you should go read Wolf's write-up on it. It's centered on Skill Swap, Sunny Day Cresselia, partnered with Heatran, which is incredibly inventive in its own right. But the Exeggutor was a marvel all in its own. In the sun with Harvest, Exeggutor would continually heal up. With max bulk investment, it was actually able to live through a remarkable range of attacks, including max attack Tyranitar Crunch. Now that might make you think it would just sit there and do nothing, but even with no special attack investment, Exeggutor's massive base plus the devastating power of Leaf Storm ripped up Politoed and Rotom W alike. Then just when you think it's done because special defense stops it, Psy Shock. And the icing on the cake, Power Swap. After losing special special attack, Exeggutor could afflict its own lower stats onto the opponent, restoring itself to full power and weakening attacks against its biggest weak points simultaneously. It could also redirect Intimidates or steal Calm Minds or Swords Dance. And did we mention it works through Swords Dance? This Exeggutor set is one of the most marvelously crafted Pokemon we've seen, who Wolf credits with getting him most of his world's wins. Although he didn't use him in the finals, this was undeniably the MVP. Exeggutor's only other VGC appearance in Gen 5 was at 2013 US Nationals, where the Canadian Jeff Professor Labcope Hamilton ran a surprise attacking Chlorophyll Exeggutor to 17 on a hybrid Trick Room Sun team. And going from that high of a second place at Worlds back to singles is a little jarring, especially because come Gen 6, Exeggutor lost the Sun that made it able to function in the first place. No surprises here, with Weather Wars over, Exeggutor sunk back into the relative obscurity of, yikes, the PU borderline. That's almost worse than PU, isn't it? The ban list for the worst tier is about as arcane as you can get. It's still okay and never used, frequently relying on setting up its own sun to function. But these days, Sleep Powder Missing can lose you the game, it doesn't work against grass types, Explosion is completely dead, and god, that speed and special defense are just horrible. Yeah, sorry Exeggutor, but at least you're still smiling, right? Now, despite Exeggutor's downfall in singles, one enterprising young trainer did make use of him in VGC 2014. And that trainer was Carpenter129, who took Exeggutor to second place in the seniors division at Brisbane Regionals. And from the looks of it, it was likely a Trick Room team, since it also featured Slow King and Mega Obama Snow. But that's all about we know. So, good job, Kyle. And I told myself I'd wait until VGC 2018 to finish before I cover Jet 7, but since Exeggutor does have an Alolan form, I know you guys are going to want me to cover it, so here it is. Despite falling from great heights, Exeggutor did grow in one sense. Literally. Yeah, that's right, we'll talk about Alolan Exeggutor, mostly because it's not going to take any time. Swapping 10 speed for 10 attack and a new dragon secondary typing isn't enough to save 
Logan Exeggutor from PU. Its main usage is as a trick room attacker, where it does in fact appreciate the attacking power provided by Draco Meteor alongside Flamethrower and its choice of a grass move. It can also run choice specs to accentuate the crazy special attack it's always had, but it's mostly novelty. Frisk is a cool but usually mediocre ability, and Dragon Hammer, its signature move, is about as interesting as its other signature move, Barrage. But hey, at least that's something. It has two signature moves, and we mean real signature moves, not these Blaze Kicks here not against where other stuff gets it too. Regular Exeggutor is, if anything, worse because of its less useful defensive typing and the relative uselessness of its other abilities. Now on to doubles. Of course, Wolf tried to make a Lowland Exeggutor work in doubles. He even released an extensive analysis of the Pokemon, but uh, yeah, let's just say it's less useful than his World's Analysis article for sure. But Wolf's nothing if not committed. So true to his word, he brought a Trick Room Leech Seed Harvest Exeggutor to the One Nation of Gamers Invitational, where he promptly went 0-2. So was it worth it, Wolf? Yeah, it probably was. And that's it, so how good was Exeggutor actually? Man, this thing might have seen the steepest decline of any Pokemon we've covered yet, except for maybe Tauros. From top tier in the early generations to bottom of the barrel now, sure it had a blip of good fortune in Gen 5 credit of Weather Wars and Wolf, but even then, it was a niche pick that didn't come close to the heights of its Gen 1 dominance. Maybe if all these three heads actually started working together, it would do better. But for now, it looks like they'll blabber over each other unheard by anyone, removed from the spotlight. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And of course, as I always say, comment on what Pokemon you want to see next. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms, yada yada yada. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.